All right, I think everything's connected. Cross our fingers. And today I'm gonna start with, who do I wanna start with? Also, let's make sure, I'm gonna keep my eye on the Facebook page. I don't think Restream is connected to that. Uh, but I could be wrong. Actually, hmm. Okay. Well, hey, thanks for showing up. Let's see. Yeah, I think this will work. I think I'm set up correctly. It's been a while since I've streamed, uh, but I think we're in good shape. So let's start this out with. Let me just grab. Ooh, how do I want to start this out? Let's start with a plain 3D. Drag it onto my canvas here, going to make poly mesh 3D, going to poly frame here. Let me move this window so it's not distracting me. Also, uh, hey, thanks for showing up, Taka. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to mask a general shape. We're going to make a quick flower for a bee I made. This shouldn't take too long. I looked up some flowers. I saw a forest wanderer look kind of like a neat flower, so I think we're going to do that one. Uh, but first, I'm going to make a petal, and whenever I just need to make something real quick, what I'll do is I'll grab a polyplane, especially if it's going to be like a 2D shape that I want to kind of bend to my will. I'll go ahead and just grab a uh, plane here, and if I want a nice clean cut of this image, all I got to do, and you can mask and, uh, you know, smooth your borders and stuff like that, but what I'm going to do... So I'm going to go to Geometry, Edge Loop, we're going to do Edge Loop Mass Border, and that'll kind of cut out this shape right here, and then we'll go ahead and do a Delete Hidden. And now if I want to smooth this out a little bit more, I can go into my Deformation Polish by Features, and we'll just smooth that out. And if we want nicer geometry, Zero Mesher, Adapted Size down to zero, half. There we go. So this will be our nice, plain Jane little petal shape here. So now that I'm kind of just looking at this object. In fact, if I wanted to do a mirror and weld, I could do that too, and then Z remesh this result. Let's do that. Uh, Z remesher. And uh, oh, I would turn X symmetry on. And you can also help out Z remesher a little bit if you just pull these edges around where you want to see it. It'll usually um, do a pretty good job. So now if I want to go ahead and bend this, well, we probably want to give it some thickness first. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Z modeler brush, BZM. Hey Rakesh, thanks for showing up. I'm doing well. Let me know if you can hear me okay. We had some audio troubles on my stream last time. I think everything's sorted though. So I'm going to give this thing a little bit of thickness. If you want to taper that thickness, I'm going to go into my deformer here. <clears throat> Let's see if taper is going to work. It may not. I might have to use a deformer deformer. Oh yeah, that'll work. So you can taper it thick to thin like this. So we can kind of have to thin it out on this side and then maybe thicken it up on this side. Hit accept. And if you hit D, that's going to turn on dynamic subdivisions, and that's going to give you a preview of what it would look like subdivided here. Uh, let's go ahead, turn X back on, polyframe on, and we'll go ahead and just kind of make this shape a little bit closer to the shape that we want. We can kind of stretch this out a little bit with our gizmo. We can kind of soften this point out a little bit here with smooth. Okay, I think that'll work. And then, oh yeah, this is the picture I'm looking at, by the way. Something like that. So, uh, you know what? We could probably, let me do this. Save image as. <clears throat> Import. Let's go to our recordings here. Um, oh, no, nope, streaming. That'll work. Texture, select it. I'll throw that in our spotlight here. And then we'll shrink this down and we'll crank that opacity all the way up. And then I'm going to go into my brush here. Oh man, do I remember where this is? I always forget. Um, samples. Spotlight projection off. That way I can, I can keep spotlight up there, but I can go ahead and sculpt uh, in my viewport up here. So let's go ahead and hit W. I'm going to go in here. We'll do a bend arc. And then from this side, we'll go ahead and bend this thing a little bit. And then from this side, uh, if I, I can bend it from this side, I can go like, hey, I want to bend it, but it's going to be a nice even arc. So in this case, I'm going to say accept. And then I'm going to switch this over to a bend curve. And then I'm going to choose my axes here. 
down the axis, then we're going to crank up that resolution just a little bit, let's say three, and now I can go through here and I can modify that curve. Now before I do that, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to go to my subtool here, we're going to duplicate this off, there we go, and then now I can do all sorts of pedals and different types of bending uh, with array mesh and I don't have to worry about uh, having to do those individually. Hey everybody, thanks for showing up. Cool, audio is good. Tyrone, Hannibal, Gear in Mobo. Um, yeah, so the bend feature, that's, uh, those are under the deformer. So in 2018, uh, if you go to the Pixelogic homepage or if you go to my YouTube page here, if you go to the ZBrush 2018 What's New, I've got a playlist in here that has, oh boy, many, many videos in here. Let's say 55 ish videos in here and the new deformers I go over in here and I also catch you up in the older deformers. Uh, if you also want a little bit more information on the older deformers you can also go to the ZBrush 4R8 what's new and then this one has the uh, slightly older deformers. But uh, yeah so those are those are really fun deformers here so now if I want to go ahead and make this flower really quickly all I got to do is go over here to my array mesh and we'll turn on array mesh and Go ahead and turn off our polyframe here. I like to use transpose to set my pivot, so I'm going to hit on transpose, lock position, lock size. Uh, to turn transpose on, you got to hit Y, and that'll switch you back to transpose mode. Um, if you go to my Intro to ZBrush Part 1, you'll learn a lot about transpose because I made those before the gizmo was even invented by the kind people over at Pixelogic. So if we go to array mesh here, and we're going to say we want to rotate this pedal around in kind of a circular, uh, circular way here. And so what we're going to do is say we're going to rotate and we're going to say, I don't know, a repeat of seven. And then we're going to change the uh, X amount. Nope. Y amount. Nope. Z amount's what we're looking for. Uh, if you want to see that, if you go to the floor plane here, you're going to see the pedal sticking straight up. So we're rotating in the Z direction. Let's go ahead and turn off array mesh here and we'll hit Y to go into gizmo. And I'm just going to lay this down on the floor. That'll make my brain work a little bit better. There we go. And if we also want to, we can position this pedal because I know this is where our pivot's going to be at the center of the world. So I can that can save me a little bit of time here. And we can also, because I duplicated this off, we can start layering this from the bottom up. We'll say the bottom ones are going to be longer. And we'll go ahead and thin those out just a little bit too. And then really quickly, I know I keep saying really quickly, but it should be quick. Array mesh. Uh, turn that on. We're going to repeat of seven. We're going to rotate in the uh, y amount. Now, because I've rotated, it's going to be in the Y amount. Then we're going to say 360. It's going to go all the way around. And now we can start changing these repeats. So if we want to have this many, that's fine. And we can offset these later manually just to kind of get them from overlapping. We can also turn it into nano mesh and offset them randomly too. Uh, maybe we'll give that a shot. But anyway, so we've got this one here. And now anything I do to this one, if I turn on polyframe, you're going to see that's my one instance. So again, if we go in here to W, and then we go to the bend curve, and then we start messing with these, all of these are going to follow suit. So we can start cupping these around at the bottom here. And we can even treat these as leaves if we wanted to. And another thing we do is say we want we like that, we'll hit accept. I'm going to go in here to my Z modeler brush. Uh, BZM, BZM, hover over a face, Q mesh, polygroup all, and then we can just hold down shift, and then that'll pull along that surface normal for that polygroup, and that'll kind of thicken those up just a tad. Um, speaking of, so what we're looking at now, as uh, so here's, here's me with dynamic turned off, and then D to turn dynamic on. That's just a preview, so if you're not familiar with that, it's going to be under geometry, uh, not dynamesh. Geometry, dynamic subdiv, you can do D to turn that on, Shift D to turn it off. I'm going to give it, like I said, a preview. Now let's try this. Let's see if this is going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this to nano mesh. And what that's going to do is give me planes here. And then now each one of those uh, petals has been given a plane. And on that plane, we have a petal just sticking right out of that face. So now what I can do is I can go, it's not an array mesh anymore, it's a nano mesh. So you can see here's my nano mesh properties. If we go to show placement off, that'll turn the polyplane off. And then again, each one of these polyplanes has this geometry sticking out the middle of it. So if we go to edit mesh, you're going to see this is where we can edit the petal if we want to. 
But what I'm going to look for is offsetting in the Y, and we're going to turn on variance for that. Let's see if this will work. There we go. So now, instead of manually going through and offsetting these, you can just vary the offset in the Y direction. So you can go from an array mesh to kind of get this set up, and then you can convert it to a nano mesh, and then you can kind of offset these things a little bit, and you can put in some variance here. So it'll go ahead and give you some randomization. Um, if you want to get really crazy, you can start doing like um, random distribution, and that'll start randomly distributing this around here. It's not going to work that great. Um, you might be able to play with that and get it to work a little bit nicer, but off the top of my head, I'm not sure I could get that to work. But anyway, if we're happy with that, we can go to inventory, uh, one to mesh, and then we can go ahead and get rid of these polyplanes, don't need them anymore. So control shift, select them, invert that, delete hidden, we can hit D again to dynamic, and there we go, we've got our base petals. Now, this is gonna be more expensive than uh, an array mesh because these aren't instances anymore. So now we're sitting at real geometry of 2,400 points, not a huge deal. ZBrush can handle millions and millions and millions of points, but uh, just something to consider, I suppose. Ah, uh, the text says, I have something. I have a problem with alpha and surface noise. When I scale it down, my noise becomes with seams. Um, so if you want to capture a seamless alpha, you can go to Z plugin, nano tile textures, and you can make your own, um, Actually, I think I have something on that, unless I'm crazy. Give me a second. Okay, yeah, if you go to my YouTube channel, actually, if you go to my YouTube channel, there's a nano tile um, playlist where you can go through here. We make, uh, I think we make something silly like um, seeds. So I scatter some seeds and then we make a tileless texture, tiling texture so that when we scale down the noise, it is tiling. Um, also, if you just Google um, Ask ZBrush Nano Tile, maybe. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> There's an Ask ZBrush. I'll go ahead and link you guys to this. How can I cre create a tileable alpha map and apply it to a model? Let me see if I can link this to you. Give that a shot. Which I think Drust goes through the exact same thing. Yeah. So if you want that one, you can certainly use that one. If you want my playlist, um, Drust is probably better, but I'll go ahead and link you to this one just in case it is anything that interests you. And uh, let's go ahead, and I'm, I'll, I'll keep these ones as nano mesh down here. And let's go ahead and rotate this around real quick. And we'll go ahead and thin this out, push it back like this, and we'll just do another array mesh here. So we'll go down to... Actually, let's go ahead and duplicate this off. And then again, we'll turn on our array mesh. We sure do we get a good by this. Good by this? Good at this by now. And we'll, let's see if we can get a little bit tricky with our array mesh too. So what I'm gonna do is go to array mesh, and then we're gonna again rotate this in the Y amount, 360 degrees, and we're going to repeat this. Um, not quite sure yet, but we do need to reset this pivot. So I'm gonna hit W. Uh, we're gonna turn on lock size, lock position, transpose. Hit Y to go into transpose mode. I'm gonna grab this little yellow pivot right here and we're going to stick this right in the middle of our world. So there we go. We've got that many duplicates. Now we can say I want to repeat this more or less. I think that'll work. And then let's go back into our gizmo. We'll t put on that bend curve again. Keeps our settings from last time which is real nice. And then we'll go ahead and bend this around. Um, let's say we're going to accept that. Actually let's curl these up a little bit more. Okay, let's say accept, and also let's say if we can like offset this. I'm just going to rotate this and move this over a little bit. And if I offset these, it's going to be offset all on one. Let's see if we can add another layer to this. Actually, while we're thinking about this, I'm going to do that QMesh polygroup ball and, and uh, thicken that up a little bit. Uh, let's do a pen new. Let's do offset in the Y amount a little bit, so we're going to shrink this up, and then we're going to scale it down in the X, Y, and Z. I think on this one too we can use our transform unless I'm mistaken, so let's hit, uh, I'm not a by any means an array mesh expert, but we'll give it a shot. So if I go through here and I grab, so we're in scale mode, 
We can scale these down a little bit. So this is still the same array mesh, we've just done a repeat here. And I wonder if there is a, I can mirror it across the X. I don't want to mirror across the Y, I can mirror it across the Z, there we go, that'll offset it. Nice, all right, so we'll mirror Z. We'll, and we can also change our repeats to, oops, no. Can't change our repeats because this is controlling the number of flowers, this is just controlling the same number of flowers up and offset a little bit. Uh, that's not terrible, I suppose. Uh, okay, scale X, Y, and Z amount. So if, we, if we're scaling in the X and the Y, that's about, that's that's what I wanted to do. So we'll go ahead and uh, make those the same. And I think by grabbing this middle one here, we're scaling in the X and the Y amount. So that's giving it a cupping look, or I'm sorry, the X and the Z amount. So we're gonna kind of cup this flower a little bit. That'll work. And if we wanna just do another round, sure. We'll go ahead and append a new one. We'll go ahead and offset this in the Y amount just a little bit. Ooh, that's going to do two of them. And then we'll do another scale. Oh wait, we scaled that in the Y amount, sorry. Offset. Y amount. Oof. Scale. And then we'll do another mirror in Z. That could be one way you do it. I don't really like that, so what I'm going to do is on the stage here, we're just going to delete that stage. But I don't mind this one here, and again, because these are all instances, let's turn off transpose, I can go through here, and we'll go back to our Z modeler, and we can like make any changes we want to these flowers, we can go through here, we can move this stuff around, and they all follow suit. So, keeping an array mesh, now these are stacked on top of each other, so I may have to convert these geometry and kind of do -do 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 -do, move it around, uh, but at least that'll get us somewhere in there in the ballpark anyway. Um, okay, and if I miss anything, I apologize, just keep shouting it out. Uh, Hannibal asks, will you be able to deform the selected areas of that Z tool by masking? Um, you can, so this one here is just geo, so you can go through here and you can like mask out, and we can kind of blur this out, let's go ahead and grab our gizmo again. So I can go through here and I can kind of mask this out and then deform if I wanted to. Um, even on your bend curve deformer, I believe you can mask. On these ones here, it's only going to apply to like this little piece over here. So you can mask through here if you hit R or W, doesn't really matter. Control drag. And then you can just rotate along that where it's masked. And all the other instances will follow. Kind of like that look. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll just curl those up just a little tad more. And kind of get a little jaunty here. We can kind of twist that a little bit. And uh, let's do one more. Let's go ahead and take our duplicate that we had. And this will be our last one, so I'm not going to bother duplicating this off. Although if you want to play it safe, there's nothing wrong with that. And we'll go ahead and scale this down uniformly. Thin it out a little bit. We'll shrink it down just a bit. Go ahead and stick this in the middle here. And we'll drop this down. And let's do another bend curve. And we'll go, you are curled way up. We're getting towards the middle here, so you're gonna curl way up here. And then just real quickly, Z modeler brush, we'll thicken this up just a bit. And then beep, beep, beep. Array mesh, turn it on. Rotate, Y amount, 360. We're gonna re need to reset set that pivot, so transpose mode, hit Y. Grab this little yellow dot, stick it in the middle of the world. Right now the repeat's only set at two, so now we can just repeat that however we want. It does look a little bit thick here, so I'm going to turn off transpose, and we're going to go ahead and grab our gizmo again by hitting Y. We'll go ahead and accept that. Thin those out just a little bit. All right, something like that. And if we want to offset these, all I got to do is just grab this one here. You can hold down Alt and move this pivot, and we can just rotate it. There we go. Okay, that'll work. And we can do overall, if I convert this to geometry now, we can go ahead and stack these in a little bit better way, we can also use deformers to kind of curl them up a little bit. So let's try that. Let's go ahead and say, um, instead of hitting array mesh and converting and all this stuff, or array mesh, um, we don't want to convert to nano mesh. We can just make that, uh, we can click make mesh and that'll go ahead and convert this to geo. Another thing we can do, I believe, is we can go up here to geometry and we can hit convert BPR to geo. And another thing we can do, a little bit faster, if you have a lot of these, Z plugin, 
go over here to the Clean Tool Master and there is a BPR to Geo All. You can just convert all of your BPR to Geo. So that way you have geometry, geometry, geometry. So let's go ahead and merge all these down. That's going to be under Subtool Merge. So we'll merge and then we'll merge again. And now we've got this all as one piece of geometry here. So let's hit W. Let's go into our deformers here. Let's do another. Oh, wait, I want to do a bend arc. <clears throat> Let's do Shift D to take it out of, whoops, um, D, Shift D. You know what, let's hit, uh, so when I had dynamic on, it converted that dynamic to subdivisions. Huh, let's go ahead and delete higher. Uh, I don't need that much real geometry, I just need to preview it. So D and Shift D. Let's go ahead and do our bend arc. And then now we can say maybe we can bend this up a little bit more here on the side and this side and hell even not that side something like this that'll work and we can also just scale this in a little bit that'll work so now I've got all these different pedals and let's say I want to go ahead and stack these manually one way I can do that is I can hit W and we can go over here to our brush and we're going to say auto masking and we can say mask by topological and then with our move brush we can just sorry I was on the wrong brush here um, that was I don't remember what brush I was on but go to the move brush first then hit topological you can even turn the range down if you want to play it safe but since we're just going to be moving these things around individually you can just make your brush size really big and that'll go ahead and you can just, whatever you click on first, you can move around. Um, also, you can make your brush size really small. And then when you move these things here, oops, make it all the way to one. Now you can just go through here. If your brush size is at one, uh, draw size at one. And that's just hitting S, by the way, to bring a little draw size up where my mouse is. Now I can just go through here and I can just quickly move these things around without like deforming them at all. You could also make these into individual poly groups. So you could do an auto groups under your poly group menu and you could do that. Um, but then I would lose the functionality of being able to thicken these things up all at once because I have these poly groups all set up the way I want. Um, it wouldn't be that difficult to get the poly groups back. You can just group by normal angle, but we'll avoid that for now. Let's go ahead and stick these a little bit closer in here. And we'll just drag some of these out. So again, we're just gonna stack them so they're not sitting right on top of each other. If we can help it, let's turn off the floor. There we go. Okay, so we've got our flower here. And like I was mentioning, if we go into your Z modeler brush, because they're all in the same poly groups, we could do Q mesh poly group all, and then I could thin or thicken all of these out at once. Although these do look similar, these similar poly groups that did change them when I converted them. I converted this one earlier than this one. So if I wanna make these all the same, I can grab this one, invert that, hit control W. And then we can grab this back one here, invert that, grab the back one on this one, invert that, control W, make them all in poly group. And then we can get rid of both of these sides and then hit control W. So now they have all the same poly groups, Q mesh poly group all. And now I can thicken these all up at once. Cool, something like that. Good morning, AK Chang, thanks for showing up. Um, let me get some more warm water here. Not great warm water. Um, so, Lee asks, where did you paint the pedal to convert a thicker, thicker mesh? Someone in Check Knife 2, I'm assuming somewhere in the Polygroups tab. Um, oh, that was just an extra, well, it was kind of an extraction. And you know what? That's another way you could do it. So, what I did, we'll go over this again. So, poly, polyplane here, make poly mesh 3D. What I ended up doing is just masking the shape. You can also hit X to go across X symmetry and mask in this direction. And then doing a quick uh, edge loop, mass border, and then isolating this and then hitting delete hidden. You could also do, boy, any number of things. You could have that masked and then you could also do an extraction. If I remember what that is, subtool extract. Uh, you can do an extraction like this. You're probably gonna wanna turn your smoothness up, play around with the thickness a little bit. Um, oops. Did I lose my mask? Mask and extract. There we go. So we extract that. You can hit accept and then you'll have this. Now the reason I don't tend to do an extract is because I have to clean this up and now I've got two sides I need to clean up. I would rather have just that one side we had originally 
um, go into your Ziri Mesher, adapt size down to zero, half, clean this up, let's keep hitting half until you get down to what you want. Go ahead and clean this up however you want. And now when I go into my Z Modeler brush, Q Mesh Polygroup All, give it some thickness. Let's go ahead and flip, oops. So whenever you use Q Mesh, if you pull up, it'll be fine. If you pull down, it'll look inverted. Just make sure you go down here to Display Properties and flip your normals there. Your vertex normals. Uh, then we have this, and then for the thickness and the tapering, it was just going into Gizmo, this little gear icon, and then just running a taper. And then we tapered this side to be a little thinner, this side to be a little thicker, and we are done. So here, accept it, sure. And then kind of getting that. And then doing our bend arc here uh, to kind of take this middle and just kind of give it a little bit of flavor. And then going into our bend curve and go in. Uh, you know what, if you want more resolution too, you can just crank that up a little bit and then you can start getting real fancy with how these things do their stuff. And then you, you can also go through here on these twists, you can like twist it a little bit along here. So it's really good for hair uh, as well. So you can kind of shrink it in and scale it in. So there's a lot of control in here for that. Uh, let me take accept. And then you go in here and you say, Ray mesh, and I forget which way this is positioned, probably uh, if we turn the, f oops, crash on save. You know what, I need to turn that off when I'm on streaming. I always forget. Now, the good news is we didn't lose anything. Let's go wait for it to come back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're gonna see you have a Z project in here and a Z tool. We'll just grab the Z project and that, well, oh crap, let's grab the Z tool then. There we go. So now on this one here, we can say, uh, 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 oh, let's also go into preferences here. Quick save. I thought I cranked that up. Let's crank that up and we'll say store config. There we go. So now for the array mesh part, we can go into uh, let's see, so we still have the mask thing there. So now this one is just gonna be the array mesh. So we turn on our floor, we see which direction we're headed. Uh, you can array mesh this around the Z if you want to. I prefer to have things laying down on the floor. So we can go ahead and just do an array mesh and we'll say rotate in the Y amount 360. And then we're gonna need to set that pivot. So transpose, size, lock, size, position, and grab this pivot, set it in the middle here, and then turn up our repeats. And we're off to the races. Now let's see if I can't, because we got this one back, which is fine, but what I would prefer to have back is Z project. So that was a quick save. But this one doesn't have everything I need, I don't think. Let me go in here. Well, I guess we did lose our flower. Great. Well, at least at least we have how to make the flower. Uh, we won't have uh, how to render the flower because it's gone. But we can start on something else new. Let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and go into edit mode. Out of edit mode, hit control N. And uh, I'll recreate that flower for the, for the render. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh, and you could also, if you wanted to, let's talk about that. So you can go in here to the pedal here. Oh, you know what? Maybe maybe this will be fortuitous. Let's hit Y. Let's scale that down a little bit. And in our array mesh here, let's go to the lightbox array presets. And is there one I can just steal? These are all loop-de-loop -loop here. You can save an array mesh so you can see the save button right here. So, you know what? Let's do that. Let's work smarter. So we're gonna say, this is our pedal here, this is our floor here, I'm gonna rotate this down. Oh man, it really does not like this recovered file. All right, we may have to start over again. If you ever wanna clean up an object, if there's like a gremlin in the machine, what you can do is, so there's a recovered Z tool, I guess we can just load that back up. All right, 
So this thing, we don't need any more. The Z tool here, let's go ahead and export this onto our desktop. And still maintain our polygroups here. If you want to change them, you can just isolate one and then hit Control W. So now we've got this pedal here. Now let's try this. So array mesh here, array mesh, rotate Y amount 360, transpose Y. Set that pivot, and then crank up our repeats. Hit W, turn off transpose, go back to our gizmo, go in here to bend curve. Let's delete that. There we go. Choose our axis our resolution, turn array mesh back on. So we've got that. So now if we like these settings, let's go ahead and crank those repeats just a little bit here. Q mesh, polygroup all. So if we do like these settings, we'll go ahead and say save. And let's go ahead, I think those are in ZBrush. Uh, Pixel Electric Zebras 2018 Z Array presets, and we'll call this Flower. So now, if I ever do want to repeat this, <clears throat> what I can do is I can go up here to Subtool, and let's go ahead and duplicate this off. That's another thing you can do too, is that this array mesh is still on, you can just have this exact same settings. So then if you want to, you can go through here, and you can offset it like so. And then you can continue just changing these uh, settings here, go back into your bend curve, and we can just continue to bend these up here. But you can also, when you go in here, you should now have in your light box array presets. There we go, there's our flower. So you can just double click that if you have a pedal. But I like this a little bit better. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep duplicating this up. So you know what? It's okay. It's okay. We're learning. I'm learning. Just don't crash again, ZBrush. And then we can keep dropping these down a little bit. Let's go to a repeat of like seven on this one. And then we'll go grab our bend curve again. And we'll do one more. That'll work. So save often. We'll go ahead and quick save. There's our array mesh, and then we can convert all this BPR to Geo if we want to. So that'll be under the Z plugin. Clean Tool Master. BPR to Geo all. Go ahead and merge these down. And if I want to do all of these pedals at once, we can do the whole polygroup thing. I think these will be fine. So again, we'll make our brush size really small. Go into Move Brush. And under here, under the brush settings here, Auto Masking. Top Logical. And then with our size set to 1, we can just quickly go through here and just start offsetting these pedals a little bit. Now, if you are joining us late, we did kind of use Nano Mesh to do an auto offset along the Y. That worked okay. So that can be another alternative for you, maybe. And then on the bottom here, womp, 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 womp. there we go. There's our flower. And then if we want to, we could even go in here to our inflate brush. That doesn't have topological turned on. I can just go through here and I can kind of inflate in these middles here a little bit. Just kind of fatten those up a little bit. You can also smooth some of these ones if you want to thin them out just a little bit on the outsides. I think those will be fine. 
And uh, what's another thing we can do? We can also hit Shift to smooth if we want to put anything in the middle here, which we are. So going back to our Forest Wanderer, this thing. Let's go ahead and we can stick some pollen and a little bit of scraggly things, and I think we'll be done. Let's see here. Um, morning, John. You Can you move scale, etc. in two axes, constraining the other? I think he saw that before, maybe holding alt. Yes, so let's try that. We have, I think that was in my, <laughs> this is going to be embarrassing because I did cover this in my uh, Zebras 2018, I believe. Um, yeah, so holding down alt when you're scaling, you can do a non-uniform scale. You can also scale uniformly. If you hold down alt and scale, is it alt? Man, you know, this is what happens when I record something and I learn something and then right out of my head because I never use it. Uh, 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 let me think. YouTube. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch my own videos to learn this one. ZBrush 2018. What's new, Mike? Well, I sir don't know because I don't remember anything about anything that I do. So here's my playlist here. Um, I think it's towards the end here. Startup, quick save, location, OBJ color, decimation, master presets, curve functionality, group by normals, multi-copy. Oh boy. Somewhere in here. Oh, you know what? I think it's under stretch and skew. Stretch, it will work. I was hoping for the gizmo one. Come on, Mike. You got the gizmo one? Blah, 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 blah. This guy talks too much. Yeah, we get it, dude. Come on. All right. Well, I don't remember. Maybe somebody in the comments will remember. But I'm glad I watched that because you can go into uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, stretch and skew. And uh, even the scale here, non-uniform scale in those directions. But if you want to do two directions, I, I want to say, let's say stretch. I mean, you can do it in two directions. It'll just take you a few more clicks here. Let's delete that. Yeah, there is a way. There is a way. I remember what it is. I just don't remember where I have it. Um. Yeah, mesh shut out spikes of polygons and got to start again. Yeah, save often. I'm not sure. Uh, have you changed your hard surface technique since 2018 came out? Yeah, a ton. Uh, I need to do an update on that. I've been working very, very efficiently. I've been making a lot of really, really big scene files that log in in about not even 20 meg. Yeah, and uh, you know, on my B, if you go to, so what we're doing here, uh, we're just following up the last video I put up here, which is my, um, oh, I just dumped a bunch on here. So the ZBrush fur, we made a little B in here and we took it into KeyShot. Uh, if you do want more like ZBrush to KeyShot specifically, I have a KeyShot to ZBrush Bridge Quick Start. I can link you to this if you want. So this will this will take you through a bunch of KeyShot functionality and ZBrush Bridge stuff. Um, but yeah, we can throw this in the KeyShot. Not wrong with that. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll stick a, uh, uh, oh yeah. I was like, I know I got pictures here. So on this one here, we can use fiber mesh, I think. Maybe a mix of fiber mesh, nano mesh, and array mesh here. So. If we go in here, let's go ahead and just throw in, we'll throw in a little, uh, what was that called, a sphere? <laughs> we'll throw in a little sphere here. If we want to have that position correctly, I'm just going to go here to subtool and we can just append a sphere. I don't really don't care about the topology of the sphere, so whatever it comes in as is just fine. We're going to squash this down. If it is a little bit heavy for you, all you got to do is go in here to zero measure, that size down to zero half. And um, let's turn on X symmetry just for the heck of it. And we can just keep hitting half. 
ease that geometry right up. And we'll go ahead and just cover up this middle part here. So this will be the part where the little little sticks stick out. You can you can tell I'm very well versed in flower anatomy. So we're going to go in here to our nano mesh, or I'm sorry, our fiber mesh here. And we're just going to mask this top part here, or we can just isolate this top part if we want to, because if we wanted to do nano mesh, we could just make a poly group out of this, uh, or we can just mask this off, and then that top part will be masked, and that'll be where my fiber mesh comes out. So we can go into our fiber mesh here, and we can say, does any of this uh, look like what I'm looking for? And this one kind of does. Tall weeds, veins. We can try this one. Let's try this one here. Let's try this one. If we hit BPR, that'll give us a little bit better of a render. Let's change this over to Skin Shader 4 too, so we can see what's going on. And go in here to the modifiers, and you can crank your mask fibers down. And let's turn off our gravity. There we go. So we're kind of getting some sticks. Let's change our coverage here, maybe. Yeah, that could kind of work if you're uh, going for that kind of kind of look here. What I'm thinking though is, you know, you could use fiber mesh. You could go through here and you could see if there's one in here or if there isn't, you can go ahead and create one. Uh, you may even start simpler and see if there's one. That's just uh, because all I really need, I don't really need that many sticks. I just need maybe a dozen. So what we could do instead, let's go ahead and take this one here and the gravity will turn down to zero. And we'll turn the texture off. And we'll turn our max fibers way down. So this is really all we're looking for. We're here, we can hit BPR, and that's what we're gonna get. Um, let's turn off polyframe. That'll kind of work. So we turn off solo mode here. That'll be what we get. Let's go ahead and go down here. So we're getting eight segments on BPR setting here. Profile is still set at one. So if we want to turn this into super duper real geometry, uh, we can also change this profile up here to like four. It's going to tell you, okay, now we have real geometry here. The segments we can turn down because we don't need that many. And then our overall max fibers here. Yeah, yeah, I get it. And maybe our coverage. So something like that. I don't know. That could work. Let me double check my reference here. Eh, you know what? They're not that long. And, ooh, there's not that many of them. Something like this. Okay, so we'll go ahead and say, except up at the top here. So now we've got a fiber mesh, and we've got a little middle part, and we need to put um, kind of, I don't know, little chunky things on the end here. And then we're going to fill this whole middle part with pollen, and then I think we'll be good to go. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Let's uh, make a chunky part. How do we make a chunky part? We'll do, I don't know, I don't know. We'll grab polymesh 3D here, and then we'll go down here to initialize, and we'll do a Q-sphere. And we'll stretch this out. And you know what? Maybe we'll divide this once, just control D. And I'm going to delete lower because I don't want any to deal with any subdivision history here. And we're going to thin this out a little bit. There's a good chunky part. Now I'm going to turn this into an insert mesh brush. So I'm going to go to the top here, hit B, create insert mesh new. And then we're going to go back to our object here. And then right here, we're going to plop in a chunky part. And then we hit W and control drag, and we can make another chunky part. And then control drag again. Now this next step I'm gonna do may not be pretty. It may not work at all actually, but we'll see how it goes. So what I'm essentially thinking of doing is if I want to scatter pollen particles and have them clump to these areas. I'm going to need to dynamesh them together to get an envelope. But these are awful thin, so what I'm going to do is... Bear with me. This isn't the... You know what, this is something you could have done in your fiber mesh as well. You could have just 
continued to make fiber meshes with little chunky parts on the end, but I don't think you guys want to see me fumbling around with fiber mesh that much, so call that a day. So what I can do, I'm going to solo mode, I'm going to isolate these out a little bit. We're going to go ahead and split. We're going to go ahead and run a uh, geometry, modified topology, close holes. Control W, make it all one poly group, inflate, and I'm just going to inflate these things here. I need some thickness. Now you can go ahead and hold down shift and smooth as well. Since these are fibers, it's auto masking down here. You're auto masking fiber mesh. That means it's taking the roots and the roots are automatically masked. Depending on how many segments you have, that will control quite a bit or not very much. There we go. So we chunk those out just a little bit. Ooh, they're mowing the lawn today. Remind me about that. Okay, so we've got all this here. Okay, solo mode. And these chunky parts here, again, if I wanna just move them around individually, uh, make sure we go down here to topological, make my brush size one, tap S, W, right, Q, move brush, and then we can just really quickly. You could also, if you wanted to use your gizmo, you could control tap these if they were separate polygroups, and then any polygroup that you add separately I'm just trying to connect these to a little end here. Something like this. Okay, so now let's scatter some pollen. So what I'm gonna do is all these things are showing up on my screen here. I'm just thinking how I wanna do this. Okay. I'm going to do a quick merge visible. And that's going to take all of these things here merged. Now I gotta pick the places where I want pollen to collect. So I'm gonna say you, you, these little things, and then you, and then we're going to do control shift A, or do we? Yeah, we'll do control shift A, delete hidden. And now what I can do is I can go ahead and dynamesh all this together to get an envelope, or I can just make these into polygroups. So I guess I don't need to make an envelope, but what I do need is to take this and then this and then this and then invert that. We'll hit control W. Now I just want the top of this piece here. So I'm going to isolate this. We're going to hold down control shift and then drag, hold down alt to drag, hit control W on this one. So now we're going to take this purple one here and this purple one here, hit control W. Now I don't necessarily want pollen going all the way up the sides of these. So what I can do is I can go to the side here. Uh, you know what, hold down control shift, go into select lasso, and we're just going to cap how far up this pollen can travel. So we're just going to get rid of all these pieces here. And that's fine. Whatever. You can be a little fast and loose with this. It's pollen. It's not mechanical. It's not precision pollen. So hit control W. So now these pieces right here is the only place that the pollen is going to go, and that works just fine for me. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into, grab a little Polymesh 3D here, hit quick save, um, hit BI brush insert primitives, hit W, and we're going to grab this polysphere here. This is going to be like a little lump that sits out here. If you want to simplify this even more, just go over here to geometry, reconstruct, even simpler, delete higher. Now that we've got this poly mesh just sitting right out here, you can make it a Z, blah, 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 blah. We're just going to do it this way. So we're going to go back to our merged one here, and we're going to go into our Z modeler brush, BZM, hover over face, insert nano mesh, single poly. Right now it's set to a cube. Hit M, grab that little poly mesh that's sitting out there, and now we can say insert nano mesh polygroup all, and now it's just gonna insert those right on those polygroups here. And then we're gonna go down to our nano mesh here, and we're gonna say a random distribution, because pollen is random, although, yeah, that'll work. So random distribution, we are gonna change that size a little bit here, and we're gonna play around with these vari variances. So length, width, and height variances, random distribution. And I do want them to kind of sit in a little bit here. So let's crank that size down. That offset here, I'm going to change that Z offset so it's kind of sitting in this a little bit more. 
random distribution. Uh, let's crank up the width, length, height variation here. Offsets I don't want to, rotations don't matter. I think that'll work. So we'll just keep cranking up that random distribution here. And now we've covered that middle area with uh, little pollenous blobs here. And you could stack these as many as you want. You can nano mesh. Um, you can drag out another round of pollen if you want to. I think that'll work fine though. Looking at my reference, yeah, that'll work. So let's play around that size a little bit here. Let's turn on polyframe. And they may look a little much, but you can go through here and fine tune this once you've gone to uh, inventory, went to mesh. And now I can just grab all these pieces here, invert that. We can do a delete hidden. So now we've just got pollen sitting here. So I'm going to go back to my original, append, pollen. And then on this one, we'll hit D for dynamic preview. And then here, We'll hit D for dynamic preview, unmask that. Fiber mesh, we'll hit D for dynamic preview, sure. This one will dynamically preview that. And the pollen, I'm not gonna dynamically preview because there's a lot of stuff going on there. So now, you know what? I probably should have subdivided that because now my pollen's kind of sitting up a little bit, but that's okay. We'll go through here and you know what? I guess if we turned on Sculptures Pro, let's see if that works even better. That'll disappear some of this stuff. So. Hold on shift, turn on Sculptures Pro. And now instead of just shrinking it down, it'll actually delete some of this pollen. And if you want to know more about that, go to my YouTube channel, go to Zebras 2018 What's New, talks all about Sculptures Pro. Here's image-based lighting, just released that yesterday. You know what, maybe we'll do some of that. If I remember where my stuff is. So we're just gonna kind of randomize this a little bit with Sculptures Pro here and this will delete some of those. There we go, that'll work. And on this one here, let's go ahead and smooth subdiv that up to three maybe. And that is just under geometry, dynamic subdivision, and there's cranking up these smooth subdivisions here. So something like that could work. Uh, if we wanted to poly paint these things, ways we do that. We could also sculpt these things to kind of get a little bit of texture on here. Uh, if we did want to poly paint these, we could just pick a little color here. Or you know what, we could sample a color. Let's do that. Uh, D, 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 D. You know what, and this is something I meant to look up too. Texture import. We are streaming this. There is a way to have this texture be applied to a polyplane and have that polyplane inherit the aspect ratio. Because I was going through my old videos and I saw it and I was like, oh, that's really cool, I should do that. Uh, but I don't remember. Shift. I don't remember. I don't remember. So we'll go ahead and we'll say this is going to be, we'll say flat color. This texture map here, and we'll stick this up here in the corner. Go out of edit mode. Go back into our flower here. Go back into Skin Shader 4. And now we can just hover over this. We can hit C to sample that. And then for these petals here, we can go ahead and fill. And then we'll hit C to sample that. And then we'll fill, 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 and fill. So that'll be our start here. And I guess we could, this one we're gonna have to convert. So you know what, let's go ahead and save as Bumblebee. And we'll say this is gonna be flower, um, non-destructive. And now with this flower here, uh, if we wanna have this kind of streaky look, let's try this. Let's go into our standard brush here. Turn on RGB, uh, you can grab an alpha, like maybe a square alpha, and we're gonna drop that RGB intensity down. Turn off Sculptures Pro, unless we think we need it on. Let's go ahead and say, you know what, We maybe we should turn that on. Mm hmm, hmm, we'll play it by ear. So I'm gonna go into geometry here, dynamic, we're gonna apply those subdivisions, so now I can just paint on here. 
we're going to go ahead and hit C to sample that wider pink. And then also, let's go down here to Alpha and Texture, and let's see if we can't do uh, 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 uh. Oh, you know what? I thought it was in here. The, um... No, maybe not. Clip brush, smooth brush modifiers. Hmm. A lot of streaks was in there. Let's grab one of these. So we can start with kind of like uh, a fatter streak here. And if you do, you can hold down control shift and isolate these, do control shift A, and then we can just kind of grow that out. So you can use your polygroups here because we went one by one. We duplicated one layer by one layer, so that'll be kind of easier. And you don't even have to do control shift A if you don't want to, that's just a habit and it's gonna go through depending on your brush thickness as long as we don't have auto masking and back face masking turned on. So something like this. So we'll start with the kind of fatter and then we'll go to the thinner. This one. That'll work. And then we'll go over here. You know what, we could try to go thinner here. We can also go to this one. We go to alpha and we could maybe even try H tiles. Thin those up just a little bit. Yeah. We can also try masking by edges. And see if that'll give us, or mask by curvature, I should say. We'll see what get what that gives us. So, we got this going here. Something like that. And then you can go through here, and we can vary this up a little bit here. So you can kind of put in darker. And then you can go lighter and more saturated, so you can kind of make it a little less boring. And we're going fast because this is a live stream. I don't want to bore you with my manual painting. Now let's see if we can't go in here and isolate our edges real quick with masking. So if we go in here to masking, uh, D -D -D, we want we do want to view the mask. Looks like we had a mask on. So we're gonna mask by. You can go through here and you can like mask by cavity and stuff, but since I already have my poly group set up, I should just be able to take all of these. We're gonna mask our border here. We're gonna grow that mask a little bit. Turn everything back on, invert that mask. We'll go ahead and tighten that mask up. Hold down Control Alt. We'll turn off View Mask. So now we can just go through here and we'll turn off this alpha. And now we can go through and we'll choose a whiter color. So you can actually go through and just start touching up the edges of these things, kind of like how it's in the picture. Like the edges kind of get a little worn here. And then really quickly, uh, alpha off. Let's turn on. So when we're painting on here, we'll go ahead and get rid of our mask here. So we're painting. Let's go ahead and go into our stroke menu. Lazy mouse, crank that lazy radius up, and then we can just kind of go through here. You know what? Let's do put on an alpha. We'll do alpha of six. So we can go through here, and we don't need to. Although I do don't mind that. Eh, we'll do alpha. Turn off that H tiles there. And obviously there may be more elegant ways to do this. Uh, I'm kind of, as, as always, I'm flying exactly by the seat of my pants. No prep, we do it live. Something like that, okay. So, and then on these little bits here, you know what, just to make my life easier, I'm gonna take all these and I'm gonna merge them down. And we're gonna go ahead and say, we're gonna turn dynamic off Actually, you know what? I don't want that pollen merged. I want to keep that separate. Let's go back to select rectangle. I'm going to grab these pollens, split those off. 
these ones I don't mind having merged. So I can subdivide those once and then the pollen I'm going to leave alone. And then we're just going to really quickly go through here. We can sample that color. I'm going to go a little bit brighter, a little bit saturated, a little bit alpha off, RGB intensity, and then turn our lazy mouse off by tapping L. And then you can go through here and kind of just break this up a little bit. And then we'll go a little bit darker, maybe a little less saturated. And then alt tap to our petals here. And then we are just going to sample this. And let's say this pollen is getting real dusty in here. So we can kind of just paint in a little bit of pollen dust to kind of make those integrated just a little bit easier. Dusty pollen. Something like that. Okay. Whew. Almost out of water. Uh, let's see. Uh, will the pollen be baked on as a texture? Just for, I mean, you, you definitely could. Um, but for now, I'm probably just going to leave it alone. We're probably just going to do like a BPR render. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about B how much time we got. Eh, we got some time. We got some time. Um, Prashan asked, hey, Michael, what can the transpose do that the gimbal can't do? So there is a couple things. My favorite thing in the whole world that transpose can do that the gizmo cannot is we can go to, let's say, mm -hmm, cylinder 3D, edit mode. Got that cap gray. Make polymesh 3D. Biddy 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 And then, so we've got this thing here. And let's go ahead and say, um, boy, what am I trying to do here? You know what? The heck with that. Let's hit D to uh, apply those dynamic subdivisions. And then we'll just really quickly go in here and we'll dynamesh this because I want um, resolution on here. So, for example, uh, if you want to position an alpha, what I really love to use is brush. BT transpose smart mask. And if I go into my alpha here, I'm going to grab an alpha under military. So this is really old alpha. So if you've gone to my YouTube channel and you go way back in time to, let's say five years ago ish, there's the uh, ZBrush mech helmet. So the making of this thing. This dauber right here, so the making of this mech helmet guy is on there if you want. And so around the round places on his helmet here, see like this, deet, 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 deet. what does it say? Reflex charger. Um, and this one, A48000A004, has very, very deep meaning to me, but actually it doesn't, I'm just kidding. So if you want to put those around a rounded surface, what can be difficult is, for example, Let's show you, if I double click any of these, it's going to throw it in my alpha because it's a 16-bit grayscale. And then if I hold down, let's go back into our uh, WQRS uh, standard brush here. So if we say our standard brush, um, I'll hold down control, we're in mask pin mode. Now if we load up this alpha, we can load up this thing here, but it's going to be like, oh, do you want it square? So we got to go in here and maybe try um, drag rect for our stroke. And then we can do, uh, actually, you know what? Drag rect isn't going to help either. Um, rectangle stroke, square center. Let's go ahead and divide this up. So you can kind of do this and kind of move it around, which isn't bad. Uh, another way I like to do that is go to BT transpose smart mask and then load this alpha up. So when you do your hit Y to go out of that. Now you can use your transpose to go ahead and drag this out and then you can rotate it. Ooh, how about that? So now you're able to rotate and kind of fit this stuff up uh, exactly where you want and then you can invert that and you can deflate or whatever you want to do, that kind of thing. Um, another thing it's able to do, if we go back to just a regular cylinder 3D, make poly mesh 3D, hit W, let's go ahead, oops, let's make this mask pin back to its regular, um, We'll then control shift. We'll make this a poly group up here. So now you can, just like with Gizmo, you can control tap any poly group. It'll go ahead and auto mask that. But unlike Gizmo, what you can do is you can hold down control. And if you go to scale here, you can add in edge rings like this. And then if you hit W and hold down control and do control shift, let's go ahead and stick this out there. There we go. You can do control shift, maybe. Am I lying? Control 
yeah, hold down control, drag it out, and then shift. And uh, then you can pull these out, and then you can reset this, and then you can go to E, hold down control, and you can bring this in, then you can hit it W, and then pull this out. So you can actually do transpose modeling, which can sometimes be useful. Uh, I'm trying to remember if there's anything else you can do with transpose. And also the transpose on the array mesh that we went over earlier is a nice feature. And this that's actually even more powerful than I showed you because we can go to array mesh here, turn on array mesh, we can set our repeats here, and then we can say lock position, lock size, transpose, and we can even just pull this off here and we set that the repeat still set the eight. So we can set our repeats in here. Uh, what you can also do is you can set your repeats here with transpose. And you can set your stage, what stage you're on, we only have one stage here. And then you can even go in here to scale and you can scale along here. So instead of going into these options, you can scale and rotate um, through the transpose X, Y, and Z. And then move and then offset and then change your repeats. So you can do it all with your transpose. Uh, John says, for the aspect ratio of the texture, I think you can choose drag rec stroke, flat color material, and texture on the 2D cam has been a while. It's something really cool, and it's something that I was watching my Intro to ZBrush series, and it's something like, oh, when you have an ob uh, plane, and you have a texture loaded, you can hit a button combination, and it will snap the plane to the aspect ratio of your texture perfectly, but I don't remember. Um, Brian says, looks nice, we able to make a low poly and bake the normals and stuff. Uh, live, probably not. Um, if you want to see what I would probably do for that is um, this, you know what, this, this live stream here wasn't a bad one. Um, where's that book? So for the book here, we actually took, took this um, ZBrush sketch really quickly through Houdini and then spit it out into Painter. Um, yeah, so we basically took this ZBrush. Now you could just voxelize this within uh, ZBrush using an effect if you want to see that process. So that I would probably, probably go through maybe Houdini and do that really quickly. But if you go to the ZBrush Pistol series, this is the manual um, ZBrush way, which would be going through here, uh, voxelizing using Dynamesh, Decimation Master, uh, auto UVing, you could use UV Master for that, and then throwing it into whatever we want to bake. I bake everything in Painter, um, but you could see that here in my Pistol series. I can link you to that. Oh, you know what? There's something I meant to send a while ago. I don't know what that was. And then there's the Pistol series. Something like that. But let's go back to our flower here. So we've got our flower. It's all painted and whatnot. And we got our skin shader four on here. So if we do want to render this thing, do we want to put like a stem on here? Eh, you know what? We'll just do a pretty little render like this. So let's see what we can do. So in ZBrush, what we can do, uh, if we are going to use the skin shader four, that's fine. We'll do a quick ZBrush render. So if you go to material settings, uh, and we're using the same material on all these, so even though it has color eyes, uh, if I go through here and change any of these, it's going to inherit the material because I never did a material fill by design. So we're going to go to, yeah, we'll stick with skin shader, I suppose. But I am going to go in here to the diffuse. I'm going to crank that up to 100. So we're getting the full diffuse. And then if I hit BPR, you're going to see that it is casting a shadow on that plane behind it. If I want to change those shadow settings, I can go down here. Well, so... Lighting, materials, and textures all work together. Our texture in this case is just going to be our poly paint. That's actually vertex color. So we're not going to be worried too much about that. But we are going to go into our lighting menu. If we want to change our light settings, this is where that's going to happen. As well as our materials here. If you want more information on that, a good one you might like is this ZBrush Guide Stylized Rendering. I went go through um, Bob Lander's, uh, one of his guides from ZBrush, ZBrushGuides.com. ZBrushGuides pretty sure. And uh, we kind of go through stylized rendering using uh, all these settings here. However, what I'm going to do is we're going to change those uh, render settings. So we have the lighting properties we're going to do here, and then the render properties we're going to go through here. And right now we don't have any AO turned on, so you're going to see this is all grayed out. That's under here. So we only have shadows turned on, 
and I'm holding down shift to open up all these menus. And then in here, the shadows, uh, the blur is at two. You can blur it just by cranking that blur up, but what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna change this angle to like 10. And you know what, I'm basically in that, just go ahead and, and as it's closer to the object, it'll be tighter. And then as it goes farther away from the object, it'll um, blur out a little bit, but you're gonna see the quality isn't that great. If we go to our render passes here, you can hover over shadow and you can kind of see where it's fallen apart just a little bit. Uh, so we're gonna increase our rays here to maybe 25. It's gonna increase our render time a little bit, but it is gonna give us a little nicer quality. Uh, you can change the global strength. And like I was mentioning here, if you go to my YouTube channel, this very newest one, ZBrush image based lighting. That's basically what I'm doing today. So if you want to go and watch that series, by all means, it's about 40 minutes long, uh, but you can do that. So here's our pretty flower. And then uh, we can change the light. You can add more lights if you want to. And this is just like vanilla ZBrush rendering. So if you want to like add um, a rim light. Now it is going to, if you change any lighting or uh, your, your camera view here, it is going to reset it. So you are going to have to bake again. Um, but you can add another light, you can add a colored light if you want to. You can also change the direction of this light. So you can select it and you can kind of move this light around. You're going to see it's going to update because this isn't a matte cap. It's a standard material. Uh, the lighting will affect it. So you can just go through here and render it like that. Um, another thing you can do is image-based lighting. So if we want to talk about that a little bit, we can go over here to our uh, background and light cap for our background. We're going to, going to select a texture in here. Uh, you can select this one and you can actually use this as your image if you want to. Uh, all you have to do is select this background image. Um, you can turn off rotate with object if you want to. It's kind of up to you. And uh, you can change latitude, longitude, all this exposure, all that good stuff. And then you just hit this light caps button. That'll go ahead and capture the lighting in the scene. Um, this samples here is going to determine how many lights it's gonna do. Three is probably fine for this demo. And then also underneath your render, at the very top you have this details. If you hold down control, you're gonna see this is where the uh, quality comes in as far as capturing your lights from your environment maps and all that good stuff. So three quality is fine, I think. So we've got these lights here. Another thing is now when we hit BPR, it's gonna take up quite a bit of time because it gets capturing. There's a bunch of lights on this thing. So now, you know, it looks like it's a little bit the same, but now we're getting a lot of shadow information. If you want to simplify that, um, you can take any one of these lights and you can go see the shadow set to 100. Anything above this horizon line is going to have shadows turned on. Uh, you can go through here manually and turn shadows down to zero, or you can click one, go to this macro. You know what? Now that I say this, um, I'm going to say turn off shadows. I totally forgot to link that in the YouTube video. Um, light cap on off toggle. I'm going to go ahead and link this to the YouTube video while I'm thinking about it. Sorry, everybody bear with me. Um, and macro, macro, macro. Image based lighting and light cabin macro. Edit video. Macro. Bam. Ooh, you know what? That's an ugly. Hold on. Talk amongst yourselves. It's a long link. Shorten that for me, please. Thank you. Save changes. Okay, so where that macro is, is useful, small Z scripts for ZBrush 4R7. And then um, there's a macro you can download, I think written by Marcus, that now when I have this one light selected, it'll keep the light on for just the shadow for just that one and then turn the shadows off for me for all these other lights here. So now when we hit BPR, it'll just have one shadow and you can change where that light's coming from. Um, also, if you don't want to have it sitting in your environment, what you can do is you can turn the background off and then when you render, um, it'll still inherit all that lighting for you. Um, but, oh, you know what? And you can also change that direction of that light we have selected so that shadow's down to zero. I could be lying. Is there shadows turned off for one of these bad boys? Nope. Okay, 
So what we may need to do is take this draw size and change that grid size way up so that our shadow catcher, which is essentially our floor plane, um, doesn't clip any of our shadow information. Interesting. Anyway, that's image-based lighting in ZBrush. Uh, and you can get a lot done and you can go through and you can change your, oh, you know what? This is why. Oh, I always do this. So we're getting two shadows. Why is that? Well, we have this light still turned on. I don't want this light to be on. All I want is the lighting from our image here. So there we go. Now we're just getting this one light from here. So what I'm going to do is change where this light's coming from here. You know what? Also, let's let's talk a little bit about this. I don't want that environment map. I'm going to go into my comma key, go to textures. Jeez. Panoramas. Let's say we want to load up uh, this L outdoor one. That should look good on a flower, right? So we'll grab this texture here, turn the texture off. We'll go ahead and grab this texture, and then we'll do our light caps again. We'll go ahead and select our main light source, run our macro. Go ahead and turn our background off. We have our, oh, you know what? We also should probably turn perspective on. There we go. So now one shadow, you can change your shadow settings if you want to. Um, all of our lights are off. Remember to do that. You can go through here and change any of these lighting settings. Whew. Okay. Alrighty. Um, if I missed anything, um, oh, John, you helped me just uh, thinking around some some angles here in my brain. Um, let's see what I missed. Let's see. Um, If I want to do the pollen as low poly and I use alpha cards, I think, um, yeah, you could do that. Uh, basically, yeah, uh, it's kind of like using hair cards. Instead of doing a bunch of strands of hair, you do one single hair card with strands on the texture, and then you can put that on your object. Same thing with pollen or any kind of decal stuff anyways. You could just um, use an uh, alpha, and then it'll look like pollen. Because it's so small, it's not really changing the... Um, the silhouette of your object. So yeah, for sure. Good idea. Align the white dot and transpose. Oh yeah, thank you. John, you, that is another really cool thing I like to do. So we're gonna grab the cylinder here. Um, you know what, we'll just do this really pretty rendering here. I'm gonna change the color though so we can see it a little bit better. So we have this object right here and let's say we go ahead and Scale this down, and we go ahead and make a polymesh 3D, and we go ahead and dynamesh it. So I'm going through here and I'm sculpting on this thing with our standard brush here. Crank those the intensity up, and now you can hold down Alt and you can kind of carve into it. You can also hold down Shift, and now if your lazy mouse is off, if you turn lazy mouse on, you're going to get that um, that green line when you hold down Shift, like that. Um, if you have lazy mouse off by toggling L, you're just going to get this result. So you can just go through here and you can do 45 degree angles like so. Um, another thing you can do if you want to get an exact angle, you can hit W and then go into transpose. And then you can just pick any arbitrary angle. You can't hold down shift and it'll snap. Um, but you can pick any arbitrary angle and say, I want to make a line from here to here. I can hold down control and touch that white dot. That's going to move my camera. And now I can just make a line from there to there. And let's say I want to make a line from here to exactly here. Hold down control. And now I can go like so. Thank you, John. Uh, repeat last tolerance in the Z modeler modifiers. Repeat last tolerance. Oh boy. Um, I may not have an answer for you. Whoa. ZBrush just disappeared. It's really not liking my files lately. Or this morning, I should say. And that was a hard crash. I'm going to assume nothing was saved. Let's see. Z project is saved. Recovered Z tool. Oh. 
we did save this. So let's go to our light menu real quick and we'll just set this up real quickly. Background, light cap. You know what, uh, now that that's happened, let's go ahead and do another thing here too, where we can go to, give me a second. Reference library. Let's see how well this works. Reference library, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, D, R images. So you can bring in your own as well. So we're gonna go to texture, import. Let's go to uh, any one of these. So we've got a little preview guy in here. We can try doing, uh, let's do Bryant Park Environment HDR. So now we can select that. And now we can do light caps. We'll go ahead and turn that light off here. And then let's go ahead and change that exposure to say 1.5. Let's say two. You can also mess around with the gamma if you want. And now this main one here, we'll go to macro and we'll do turn off shadows. There we go. So we can use, you bring in your own HDR image, if, HDR image if you want to. So anyways, quick save. Go to edit mode. Um, so we were talking about cylinder 3D here. Go into edit mode. Ooh, this is a really cool environment to model in. I feel like I'm in the future. So now you were saying Z modeler, repeat last tolerance and Z modeler modifiers. And that is repeat last tolerance. What do you have selected up here under your actions? Repeat last tolerance. So I know where that comes in under the modifiers because I'm not certain. I'm not certain about that one. Hey, Win93, thanks for showing up. Tom, awesome. And uh, all my Brazilian fans. Uh, what's the difference between using light menu and light cap lights? Are the light cap ones better? Oh, good question. So the light cap ones are actually capturing this light information into your material. So you're going to see every single material that I select, like basic material 2, basic material, and the one we were using, which was skin shader 4. All of that lighting is built into the material. The light menu up here um, is just turning on a light that we can position. So it's light capture, it's capturing this light. And that's another thing too, when you're in my YouTube channel, you can, um, in the, um, let's say here, or my playlist here, the uh, stylized rendering one we do in ZBrush Guides, the ZBrush Guides walkthrough thing we did here, that shows you how to set up using light cap to create your own materials. Exact same way, only we're using an image to create our light cap materials. You can also do the exact opposite if you want to. Oh, I forgot to mention here, you can also turn on specular um, or reflect when you capture light cap. So that'll actually capture the reflection um, as well if you're doing shiny stuff. But if we're not, we can just do that and our specular will just be whatever. So again, going back to our flower here, draw uh, d -d 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 grid size up. And this is a very somber, somber view here. Oh, looks like we also need to Now another thing we can do is we can turn on our AO and I also think it killed our which is obvious I should go to my render settings here. Um shadow radius 25 angle 10 Let's Eh, that's fine. So we've got our shadows turned on. We can also let's turn off polyframe. We can also go into our AO if we want to render AO at all. We can go to our render properties here. We can turn on ambient occlusion. Um, for our AO, I'm going to turn that blur way down. And then our angle, 360 is how you get an AO map. And the rays 20 should be fine. The strength, let's turn down to like 0.5 maybe. And now when we render this thing out, it'll go ahead. And it'll be a little bit slower because it's having to render an AO as well. But uh, we go to render pass here. Now we have a shadow pass and an AO pass that we can use to when we go to composite this thing to make it look really pretty. So I think that'll work. Let's go ahead and crank up this exposure to like three. I 
Now you don't have to use this floor plane to um, capture your shadows. You can just put in a geometry there and it'll capture your shadow just fine. Uh, but that'll work. That'll work. Anyway. Um, is there a link to the macro? Yeah, let me get you that. So here's the the link to the macro you're looking for is this uh, it's on the video on my thing too but here's a light cap light on off toggle that's the one you're gonna want to do Edison thanks for making the stream no problem happy to be here <laughs> Um, okay, so AK Chang says polygon options right bottom. Let's see. Q mesh, polygon options, right bottom. So I'm on Q mesh. Um, unless I'm missing something. Repeat last tolerance in Z modeler modifier. So here's my modifiers. I don't see a repeat last tolerance. Oh, Z, bro, Z modeler modifiers. Repeat last tolerance. Let's see if we hold down control. No. Hmm. Repeat last tolerance. So there is modifiers in here. We got face mode for the target. Now if we hover over an edge, that doesn't have it. Hover over a point. That doesn't have it, so it's only for face mode. So that's one thing. So Z modeler modifiers under face mode. Flatness 30, flat targets tolerance, pause, repeat last. Repeat last tolerance. So if we do so Q mesh, single poly. We pull that out. And then over here, we just tap. That looks about right. Now if we go down here to Z modeler and we repeat last tolerance up to 100. Oops. Looks the same. Repeat last tolerance down to, down to 1. And I'm not even sure this is repeat last that it's talking about. I'm just assuming here and then we can just tap. That looks the same to me. I really don't know. I'll have to look that up. Q mesh Z modelers. Repeat last tolerance is set to 10 by default. Hmm. That's a good ask ZBrush question. <laughs> yes. I like Babu says on Pixel Edge Twitter. Uh ask ZBrush. How to fix camera so you don't lose your position. Um to leave this camera for your render. Yeah, so let's talk about that. So in here, a couple different ways to do that. Uh, the quick and dirty way. That's not quick and dirty, it's just one way to do it. You can go to document here, you go to Zaplink properties, and you can save any view. So if I really like, uh, let's say, this view here, I can say custom one, and now anywhere I put this thing, I can go back to custom one here, and it'll snap. Um, another thing you can do, and this is my preferred method, is you go over here to movie, you can do timeline show, and now you can set multiple angles. So if you go like, I want an angle here, and if you're modeling from spotlight, reference and you want to match like different views to your reference this is another really useful thing. So you can set these different keys. Now when you drag between them, it's going to go between these different camera positions. And if you use your arrow keys, it's going to snap between them. Uh, if you want to delete some, you can just drag them off and you can reposition this. And then you can just tap here. And then now no matter where I put this camera, I can just use my left and right arrow key. It'll snap me back to this camera view. Um, Another thing I like about that is you can actually just turn that off and then no matter where it is, because that timeline still has that information, you can just do left and right arrow key and it'll snap you back to your camera view. Um, if you want to save this, you can go to timeline save and save that timeline out. Same thing with this document. You can go here to your Zaplink properties and you can say uh, save views and that'll save out your views. Cool. All right, so we've done ZBrush rendering and we got a pretty decent render here. So if you wanna go beyond this, what you can do is you can do a BPR render. And this is something I didn't mention in my videos, but you can go into the render here. 
and there is a thing called BPR filters. So you can go through here, you can turn these on. And these are like Photoshop filters. So you can go through here, you can add noise. Um, here's a blur, here's a sharpen. Now you can change these to whatever you want. You can do glows and all sorts of things like, uh, like that. Um, Orton, glow, you filter fade. So you can just turn on and off all these at once or on all at once and it'll just stack them. And in between these, if you want to like go between noise and blur, um, you can take this blur and then it, you can do opacity, just like it's a layer on your blur. So that'll make it a little more or less blurry. And then your radius, you can crank that up so it makes it even more blurry or less blurry. Um, and then if you turn this off, that gets rid of it. So you can do lots of cool things with these, um, as well as you can just composite this stuff in Photoshop later. So probably the easiest way to do that is Z plugin, ZBrush to Photoshop just turn on like, oh, I want to turn on my lights and my shadows and my subsurface scattering if I had captured that, which I didn't. Polygroup ID, Subtool ID, whatever you want. Send to Photoshop, it'll send this image over. Or you can just click on here and export these one by one and then load them up. Now, what you probably want to do is render out a specific size. So if we go uh, out of edit mode, hit Control N. Let's go to document. We'll change this to like 1024 by 1024. Well, if I do that, it's going to mess up my turn off proportional. 1024 by 1024, hit resize. And now when you drag our flyer back out, now we have a square one. Now to make sure we, we're seeing all of this, I'm gonna go here to document and then zoom my whole document out. So now we can see the whole document here. So now when I BPR render, you're gonna see each one of these is saving uh, at 1024 by 1024. So you can make this 8192 if you want to, make a huge render, it's kind of up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my filters off here. Actually, you know what? kind of like that blur on. So now every time you hit blur, or every time you hit BPR render, your filters are going to turn on. Oh, isn't that pretty? So uh, also, we can go back to our light menu here, and we can say, turn our background off. Right. Wow, look at that. Okay, here we go. Um, in 2018 to scale into axis, first click on the scale manipulator, then press and hold alt. Thank you, Spectrexamerex. <laughs> I gave it a shot. So, uh, yep, that would be it. It just missed. Let's see, make polymesh the So, on this one, for instance, uh, start scaling and then hold down alt. And now you can scale in those two axes. So, start scaling and then hold down alt. Start scaling and then hold down Alt. Start scaling and then hold down Alt. Whew. Thank you. You win. You win Tuesday morning live stream. Uh, any ZBrush setup to improve software performance? Um, not really. I haven't. I don't really touch the performance. Um, let's see. If you want more information on that, uh, where's my computer? This PC is um so we're using the so zbrush is a cpu heavy unless you're using polygroup but i suppose uh cpu heavy uh machine needs a lot of ram needs a lot of cpu so i have the amd ryzen threadripper 950x 16 core 3.4 gigahertz and 128 gig ram uh and the memory stuff i think it sets itself it looks at your system but you can go in here and fine tune that under performance you can go through and test multi-threading multi-threading optimizer if you want to um it does pretty good for me. And then when I go to like Sculptures Pro mode and stuff, uh, my Sculptures Pro I think is set pretty high as far as what it can handle based on my machine. So there are a little bit under, not performance, but I'm trying to remember where this is too. Because again, if I don't do this stuff a lot, I tend to forget where this stuff is. But in my Intro to ZBrush 2018, it goes through, oh, you know what, let's just, let's watch it together. So here's this. Um, 2018 what's new there is a whole section on restrictions and workarounds for some stuff and then maximizing sculptors pro performance in here so we talk a little bit about where your machine is going to cap out and why and how to you know get a workaround for that and then uh, preferences memory that's where it is I teach myself stuff all the time. So under preferences memory, 
down here under your Max Sculptor's Polygons that's set to 5 million. You can crank this up if you want to, but I think this dials in, based on your machine, uh, what it thinks it can handle. Let's go ahead and do a document, W size new document. Go ahead and fill that up. And then we'll go grab our flower again. Because I just like looking at it. Uh, is the the ability to create image or model to look like they're in force perspective. So is that like uh, angle of view way up? Oh, we got a perspective on, turn perspective on. So uh, under your draw menu, you can do, so the angle of view way down, if you turn perspective off, that's pure orthographic. Uh, angle of view down to five is pretty orthographic. And then you can really crank that up to get like an extreme view like you're in a macro fisheye lens. Kind of like that, maybe. Cool, all right. Awesome, that'll work. I think that's all I got for you guys today. I guess we can do a quick render, external render key shot. Let's see how key shot fares. And then we'll call it a day. And I apologize to all the Facebook people. I don't know. I'm, I'm on the Facebook page, but I don't see the video. Oh, there it is. See y'all. Give me a second. Let me see if there's any Facebook comments I need to... Oh, boy, it's being slow. Sorry. Okay, there's not a lot. Uh, oh, thanks for the showing up from Germany and Holland. All right. That'll all over the world this morning. That's a cool thing about streaming really early in the morning is not a lot of, not a ton of people from the United States. Uh, so let's go ahead and do environment. Uh, let's do a ZBrush environment here and we'll do kind of an outdoorsy environment. So we'll just double click that. So we're going to get kind of a little bit more natural shadows here. If we don't want to see that we're on a rooftop here, we can fake it. We can go to environment. Uh, we can put in a back plane in here. If we have like a nice field back plane, we can kind of fake a little bit. Uh, but you know what? I'm just going to go over here to color. So let's, excuse me, go to settings. Uh, instead of lighting environment, we'll choose a color. And now we can just drop that color down. Medium gray, or if there's like maybe a something like that. Now, because we have this environment loaded, if we say OK, and we go back to our lighting environment, hopefully hold down Shift uh, I'm sorry, control and then left mouse. We can actually rotate our environment around. You can see those shadows updating on the fly. And if we want to change these materials, if we go over here to our materials, we're going to see um, it's all the same material. So we can kind of simplify this a little bit. We'll go to our scene here, go to materials. I'm just going to drag one material on here. And now when we double click this, any one of these, we can go to this material. We can say material graph. There's all sorts of cool stuff we can do. But uh, if we go to the texture map legacy, we can double click that. We're going to see that we're having our matte cap and V color piped in. So we do want to keep the vertex color. That's our poly paint here. But I'm going to go to brightness here and we can kind of brighten up that a little bit. And yeah, you can play with any of this stuff if you want to. And then here's our advanced uh, material here. So we can go to specular. We can crank that up, make it really shiny. Or just crank it up just a little, just a tiny, tiny bit. Um, ambient's probably fine. Then beep boop beep. All right, so environment, we've got color and then lighting. Uh, lighting, we probably want to go, let's go to product here. That'll give us a little bit of a more accurate render. And now we're going to see, whoa, my materials are really blown out. So material graph, I thought it was a little bright. It's like, I'm really able to crank this brightness up. Not that much. There we go. So, uh, and you could drop anything on here if you want to. So if we want, let's say we want to do a multi-material. And I think if we do, yeah, we can do plastic. And instead of plastic, well, I mean, plastic's fine. You can change that to whatever you want and you can get a nice plastic render. Uh, however, let's go to something a little crazier. Let's go to materials here. Let's go to miscellaneous. These are fun ones. 
Uh, here's like a lens coated, maybe. Ooh, that got intensive. Hopefully my live stream didn't kick out. Seems like it's really doing a number on my machine here. That's an intense material. Uh, let's go over here to glass. And we'll just do a solid red glass here. That's neat looking. Now when you're doing glass or liquids, you may want to go over here to your uh, lighting. And then if you turn on jewelry, that'll put in some caustics into your shadows here. So now you get a really nice cool render. Now if you go over here to material, the multi-material, um, did I not put on a plus sign? Huh. Anyway, uh, let's see. It's a really cool look though. I like that glass one. There we go. Back where we started. So anyway, key shot's a really easy way to get really nice renders. We've done this before. Uh, and you can break this stuff up back into your scene if you want to. If you want to like give these a different material, we can go ahead and say our pollen here. We're going to, uh, where is that at? Uh, 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 uh. Maybe we gotta go in here. We wanna do unlink material. So now when we go to our materials here, we've got two. We can double click this one and we can say this one is pollen which means this one must be flower, I think. If you want to test that, we can go to, to diffuse here. We can say blend with color. There we go, yep. That one's our flower. And then our pollen here, we can make this any. So now that we've unlinked those, we can even just go in here to plastic, hard, shiny, and we'll say green on our pollen there. And then on this hard shiny, we'll just change that from a green to like a yellow orangish. And feel free to change any of these properties. It's very, very shiny. So we'll probably want to crank that roughness up just a bit. Any number of things. And Cyprus, geez, Switzerland, oh my gosh. Germany again, nuts. All right, so I think this is about as far as I'm going to take this demo. I don't think I have a whole lot of time for anything else. So I'm going to call it a day. Thanks for showing up, everybody. Um, I think I'm going to be here at the end of the month, too. The last Tuesday of the month is going to be the 26th, and then I'll be on the last Thursday of the month, too. Well, I'll be on this Thursday, the 7th, I think. Yeah, I'll be on the 7th on my channel, and then the 28th and the 26th on this channel, and then 28th on my channel. Cool. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to head out. Thanks again, and see y'all in a bit.